Welcome to this uh, course. This course is part of the, the Flamingo Network of Excellence series. Uh, the purpose of this course is to provide an introduction to monitoring with natures. This course is composed of three main parts. The first part is entitled Natures at a Glance. It provides the basic elements regarding nature's functioning. It also gives an overview of its functional architecture and introduces the notions of service and service checks. The second part is dedicated to nature's configuration. The objective is to show you how to properly configure nature's through the definition of new objects. This part will be illustrated through an example scenario. The third part is about checks and their execution. Checks play an important role in natures as they are responsible for assessing services. You will see in this part how to perform checks locally or in a remote manner uh, using dedicated agents such as NRPE or NSCA which are part of natures. A first natural question is what is natures and what is natures useful for? Natures is a widely used monitoring tool for troubleshooting. The objective, or I should say the primary objective of Nagios is not performance analysis but rather fault and failure detection. The tool is simple, extensible and open source. Simple because you can easily deploy it in your own infrastructure. Extensible because you can easily build your own plugins with respect to your constraints and open source corresponding to a GPL license. It also integrates a relatively sophisticated notification system to contact administrators when something goes wrong. We mean by sophisticated a notification system including filtering and escalation mechanisms. It is important to send the right information to the right person. Filtering allows you to restrict the notifications that are sent to a given person. Too much information kills information. Escalation allows to provide multi-level support to solve a problem. You can establish a hierarchy of contacts in your list of administrators. If a failure is detected and has not been solved by the first contact, then natures will start to inform a contact of a higher level. The purpose of natures is clearly to provide support to administrators for detecting problems and failures before users experience or even realize them. For instance, natures can be used to monitor your network infrastructure at various levels in order to detect mail server failures, hard drive overloads, network footage. It may also be used to monitor services, external services out of your infrastructure such as services provided by the cloud. How does Nature's look like? This slide gives an overview of the web interface provided by Nature's. This interface shows the list of hosts, including servers and routers, that are monitored by Nagios. For each of these hosts, Nagios indicates the list of services that are checked. 
The notion of service is very large in nature and corresponds to any parameters or services that can be observed on the device. Nagios provides for each service a status. This status indicates if the service is properly running or not. The status is completed by information regarding checks, such as the last time a check has been executed, the number of checks that have been executed, and detailed information regarding check results. Nature's is based on several key concepts. The main concept is the concept of colored area. The status of a service is characterized by a color. A green color means the service is OK. A yellow color means the service is in a warning state and a red color means the service is in a critical state. The meaning, the semantic of OK warning and critical is defined by the administrator and will vary depending on the deployment scenarios. As previously mentioned, the purpose of Nature's is not performance analysis or performance display. You may, however, use dedicated plugins such as CACTI plugins if you want to do so. Another important concept in Nature's is the concept of checks. Checks are periodically executed by the Nature server in order to then calculate the status of services. A check is implemented by a plugin. A plugin is basically an external command or a script that is executed on the device. Nagios provides several ways for executing checks in a remote manner, such as using SSH or using the NRPE Nagios agent. It is also possible to perform what is called passive checks. The concept is very similar to the concept of SNMP trap. In that case, the nature server does not periodically request agents to get the status, but the agents only report alerts when a certain event happens. The administrators interact with nature through the web interface, but also through notifications that are sent when the status of services are changing. This slide shows the functional architecture of Nagios. This architecture is based on two building blocks. The first one is a data ripping system responsible for collecting the results of checks and also for calculating from these results the status of resources and the status of hosts and the status of services. The second one is a notification system capable of sending alerts to administrators. It integrates filtering and escalation mechanisms. An alert is typically sent through emails or through SMS to administrators. These two systems are implemented by Nature's processes. They can be run as services on your operating system. Nature's provides a web interface, which is implemented by an external web server and a set of CGI scripts part of Nature's. The configuration is done using simple text files or possibly Postgres database. To understand Nagios, it is important to understand the notion of services and the notion of service checks. In Nagios, a host provides several services. The notion of service is really large. It, it really has a, a large spectrum. 
A service can be uh, a service delivered by a software, such as a web server or a mail server. It can also be any configuration parameters that can be observed on the device, such as the percentage of free space on a partition, or the bandwidth usage on a network interface. What is important is to be capable to infer from this parameter a status. This is actually the role of a check. A service check provides state information on a service. It returns a value, actually a next status, indicating the status of the service. So, for instance, exit status 0 means OK, exit status 1 warning, exit status 2 critical, and you have also uh, an unknown state which corresponds to exit status 3, indicating uh, the, the timeout of a plugin or plugin run from trouble. What is important is that this uh, value reflects the nature's view about the service. These uh, checks can be locally executed, in that case they are implemented using OS calls, or uh, remotely, so as previously said, this can be done using uh, network protocols, uh, also the NRPE agent, a part of Nagios. It is also possible to use SNMP agents, in that case there are special uh, plugins capable of interacting with SNMP agents. The checks are implemented by plugins, a plugin corresponding to an external command or a script. It is therefore easy to develop your own plugins by developing a program or a script, taking some configuration parameters, uh, including thresholds, and returning the right exit status. The states of services are the mirror of what Nagios observes. We have already mentioned the four main states for a service. The OK state, the warning state, the critical state, and the unknown state. Transitions from one state to another one are possible and are triggered by the results provided by checks. In case of critical and warning states, the states are shadowed by related substates. What does it mean? This means that several checks are required by the system before considering a service is really in a critical state or is really in a warning state. So there is not only one state but two states, a soft state and a hard state. A service goes first to a soft state, and then an attempt count mechanism is used to reach a definitive hard state. Notifications to users or to administrators are only sent when hard states, corresponding to confirmed states, are reached. This simplified diagram describes the way Nagios calculates the state of a service depending on the results of checks. We retrieve on this diagram an OK state. It is uh, the only one. It is a hard state, actually. Warning states with a soft state and a hard state, and critical states. Same thing, we have a soft state and a hard state. As previously said, the transitions are triggered by the results of checks. So basically in our case, OK, critical, or warning. The diagram uses two important variables, AC 
and MCA. AC means atomed count. This variable is used to assess the number of time a check has been executed. MCA means max check attempt. This variable defines the number of time a check has to be executed before going to a hard state. Finally, arrows represent the sending of notifications. This includes notifications regarding a problem, a critical or warning state, and also notifications regarding the recovery of a service when a service goes back to an OK state. Let us consider a simple scenario where a service is in an OK state. If the check of the service returns a critical state, the diagram goes to a soft critical state and the atom count is incremented. This state is not a confirmed state. Several checks are required before reaching the hard critical state. In our scenario, the max check attempt is set to 4. That means 3 additional checks with the same value, with the critical value, are required before reaching the hard state. When this happens, a notification is typically sent to the administrator to indicate that a problem has occurred. The frequency of checks is not the same if you are in a soft state or in a hard state. A soft state is a temporary state that requires additional checks to be confirmed into a hard state. So the frequency of checks is usually higher than in a hard state. For instance, in our scenario, the interval of time between two checks in the soft state could be of one minute, while this interval could be of five minutes when we are in the hard state. The purpose of shadowed states is to prevent any biased views that may be generated by micro failures. When the check returns an OK value, Nature considers that only one check is needed to go to the OK state. Another important part is how to configure Nature. This configuration is based on an object-oriented representation. This means a nature's object permits to describe a specific unit, such as a service, a host, a contact, a contact group, a check command, this description being done with attributes and values associated to these attributes. Nagios also includes a kind of inheritance mechanism based on the concept of templates. It is also possible to specify dependencies amongst the objects you have defined. The configuration is typically based on a set of files. The main file is nagios.cfg and refers to other configuration files. In a typical configuration, you have one configuration file per type of objects. For instance, services.cfg for storing all the service definitions. Nature's requires an a priori knowledge because it does not include a discovery mechanism. That means you have to specify all the hosts and services you want to observe in your infrastructure, or you have to use a discovery tool in addition to Nature's. 
Alternatively, the configuration can also stand into a dedicated database. There are various objects that you can configure within Nagios. In addition to services, you can also configure host objects. Actually, a service has to be linked to an host in Nagios. There are only two main states for an host, an up state and a down state. The checks are really similar to the checks used for services, except that warning or OK states are equivalent to a single up state and the critical state is equivalent to a down state. The checks are typically based on pings using ICMP messages. There is no active checks if the related services are OK. There is here the implicit dependency that if the services on top of an host are running, then the host is running. There are also other important nature's objects. The contact and contact grouped objects permit to specify who to notify, I mean which administrators for instance, how to notify and when to notify them, using emails, using SMS, at which frequency. Another important object is the command object. It is used to execute check plugins or to send user notifications. These objects permit to link nature's attributes that are defined in the object definitions to plugin parameters. They are already provided for most common plugins. You can observe them in checkcommands.cfg. They also serve as a basic wrapping to send emails, as it can be observed in misscommands.cfg. Let us consider the simple scenario that we want to configure natures to observe a web server. I mean, we want to check the status of this server and make sure it is properly running. The first thing that we have to configure within Nagios is the host object. This example is given on this slide. As you can observe, this definition is composed of a set of attributes represented on the left of the definition and a set of values associated to this uh, attributes and represented on the right of, the, uh, of this slide. The first attribute here is host name and specifies the host name of this server, in our case, web server. The alias attribute permits to specify a longer description of what the server stands for. The next attribute is the address. In our case, the IP address of web server is 152.81.144.22. The check command attribute permits to indicate how the host is checked. The value here is check host alive and is a reference to a command object. This command allowing to check the status of the server by simply pinging this server. Max check attempts indicates the number of times the check has to be performed before sending notifications. I mean before the new status, the down status, is confirmed. The check period permits to specify the period of time during which checks are performed. Here the value is again a reference to a time period object. 
This reference here is 24x7 and refers to an object indicating checks 24 hours a day and uh, 7 days a week. The notification interval permits to specify the time interval between two notifications regarding the status of the server. In our case, 180 minutes, uh, meaning three hours between two notifications. The notification period can also be specified. Here it is the same than the check period, 24 uh, a days and seven days a week. The notification options attribute permits to filter the type of notifications that have to be sent to the contact group. D stands for uh, the, the down uh, notification, R stands for recovery or uh, the up status, F for flapping, these notifications correspond to a server whose status is periodically changing from down and up status, and U indicates unreachable. That means Nature's is not capable to estimate the status because, uh, for instance, uh, the router to access this uh, server is not running. The last attribute here is contact group and uh, indicates the group of persons to contact uh, when notifications are sent. It's not possible to directly indicate a, a single uh, contact. You are first to specify a group of contacts and then to associate one or more contacts to that group. Once the host object is defined, you can uh, then uh, specify the service object. The first attribute of a service is hostname. Here it is a reference of the server on which the service is running, in our case, web server. The next attribute is service description. This is uh, more than a description. This is actually an identifier of the service, of the object representing the service. In our case, uh, this identifier is a HTTP service. The next attribute is check commands. Again, here the uh, objective is to specify how the, the status of the service is checked check http is a reference to a command object and uh, this command uh, permits to uh, check the, the status of an http service max check attempts specifies the, the number of time a check has to be performed before the new status is confirmed Normal check interval and retry check interval uh, indicate the frequency of checks. Normal check interval is uh, the time interval between two checks when things are properly running. So when your service is uh, running properly, you perform checks uh, every five minutes. When something goes wrong, the frequency changes to one minute between two checks. The objective is to rapidly uh, go into a confirmed state. The check period uh, here is again 24x7. It's a, a reference to an object. The notification interval is the same than for the host, 180 minutes. The notification period is again set up uh, with the same reference and the check period. What is changing here is uh, the notification options. 
you have more status for a service, so you have more options for notifications. W stands for warning notification, C stands for critical notifications, R for recovery, corresponding to the up status, F for flapping, and U for unreachable. Again, you can specify a, a contact group uh, associated to the, the service uh, that uh, we are configuring. What is uh, also important to look at are uh, common definitions. Uh, as uh, you have seen, the uh, host and service definitions refer to check commands. So this uh, check commands corresponds to uh, commands objects. Here we have uh, on this uh, slide two commands uh, definitions. The first one uh, is uh, so the definition with the command name check host alive. So this is uh, the definition of the, the check that is used to uh, test the host status. The, the attribute common line explicitly indicates the plugins to be uh, executed to uh, execute this uh, check. The dollar user one dollar is a, a macro corresponding to the, the location, corresponding to the directory of the plugins. Then uh, check ICMP uh, is uh, the name of the, the plugin to be executed. And then you have the dash H and uh, dollar host address dollar corresponding to uh, an option. Dollar host address dollar permits to uh, obtain the uh, address of uh, the host. I mean the value of the uh, address attribute specified uh, in the, the host uh, definition. The, the same uh, thing is uh, done with uh, check HTTP command. So you have a first attribute command name that indicates the name of the command here check HTTP. And then you have the command line attribute that provides you the, the way the, the plugin is executed. In our case, uh, actually, the, the command line is very close to the, to the previous uh, definition. You have uh, the location of the plugin, then the name of the plugin, check HTTP, and uh, some, uh, some options. So the purpose of these uh, definitions uh, are really to provide uh, a link between uh, the, the parameters of uh, object uh, that are defined uh, with natures and the, the plugins to be executed. Natures provides different checks and different ways to execute these checks. The first category of checks are local checks. This checks permits to get information about your local system. All the checks are implemented by uh, plugins. Local checks are mainly implemented by plugins based on system commands such as PS, DF, Uptime. The plugins can be directly executed from the command line if you want to test the functioning of a given plugin and make sure it is properly working before executing it from natures. Here you have three examples of local checks, or I should say of uh, plugins implementing local checks. The first one is check disk. 
This plugin permits to evaluate the percentage of free space on a given partition and then to generate alerts if this threshold is less than a given value. Here you can observe that check disk takes three arguments or options. The first one, dash W30% indicates a threshold value associated to the warning state. The second argument, dash C15% indicates another threshold corresponding to the critical state. The last argument, dash P slash var, indicates the partition to be considered by check disk for this assessment. So check disk will evaluate the free space and gen generate an alert, warning state alert, if the free space is less than 30% or a critical alert, a critical status, if the uh, threshold value 15% is reached. The two next plugins, check load and check prox, are functioning in the same manner. So you specify warning and critical uh, values, threshold values associated to the, the checks you want to execute. Check load evaluates the load averages. Uh, as you can observe with check load, you have each time for the warning and the critical options, three numbers corresponding to the numbers provided by the uptime command. So this corresponds to as the load averages uh, after the, the first, the five, and the fifteen last minutes. Check prox permits to uh, evaluate the, the number of uh, processes that are running on the system and uh, then again to generate alerts, or I should say to uh, provide uh, an exit status uh, corresponding to the state that has been evaluated. A second category of checks are remote checks. Nagios provides uh, several ways to perform remote checks. The first solution is to use what we can call direct network checks. This uh, checks permits to assess network services of remote checks using plugins uh, based on network protocols. These uh, checks are directly executed from the Nagios server. Here you have uh, an example of such a check called check ICMP. Check ICMP permits to uh, assess the, the status of an host using pings. It takes three arguments. The first one here is uh, the, the IP address of the host, and the two others correspond to the warning threshold and the critical threshold. You can observe that you have two numbers for the dash w and dash c uh, options. These uh, two numbers correspond to the run trip uh, time of rage and to the percentage of uh, packet loss. Another solution to perform remote checks is to execute checks using SSH. In that case, Nature's executes a, a dedicated plugin called Check by SSH, and this one takes as arguments the name of a plugin and a list of arguments. This plugin has to be installed on the remote machine. 
and uh, is executed by the check by SSH plugin. So you can execute a plugin on the remote machine or any uh, other commands on which you have the, the rights. A third solution is to execute checks using NRPE. NRPE is a Nature's Remote Plugin Executor. In that configuration, Nature's executes a, a check NRPE plugin. This plugin takes as argument a reference to a plugin to be executed on the remote machine. So based on this plugin, Nature's is capable to interact with a dedicated daemon called NRPE. This solution is based on pre-configured plugin invocations. That means you only provide as argument a reference to the command and not the list of arguments associated to that command or to that plugin. You have also uh, other alternatives for remote checks. For instance, you can execute checks using SNMP. So you, you collect management information from SNMP agents and then you use a, a dedicated plugin called Check SNMP uh, where you can associate the SNMP reply to warning and uh, critical uh, thresholds to infer a service uh, state. You can also uh, use another service called NSCA, which is also part of Nature's. This is a Nature's service check acceptor, uh, where you will be able to uh, initiate checks directly from the remote machines themselves. The concept is really similar to the, to the concept of SNMP traps. So, to conclude, Nature's is an open source monitoring solution for troubleshooting. It helps administrators to observe and detect faults and failures within their infrastructures and outside, for instance, in the cloud. It is based on some simple concepts, such as checks, states, and notifications. It is also easily extensible and integrable. You can develop your own plugins without too much effort. It does not integrate a discovery mechanism. You have to write the definitions of the hosts and services you want to observe in your infrastructure. You can also use in addition a discovery tool and then to infer from the, the discovery results, the nature's definitions. After this course, we of course encourage you to deploy nature's and to experience it. Here are some uh, important references if you want to investigate further nature's. These uh, references have served as a basis for this course. Uh, first uh, important reference is the website of Nature's, www.natures.org, where you can download the official distribution, get plugins and uh, documentation. A second uh, reference is uh, the website of the Nature's community, www.naturesexchange.org where you can find uh, many complementary plugins. And a last important uh, reference is uh, the book of uh, Wolfgang Barthes entitled Nature's System and Network Monitoring. It is really a, a reference uh, book, the main reference book for Nature's. Thank you for having attended this uh, online course on Nature's. We hope you enjoyed it and uh, encourage you to attend the uh, other online courses provided by the Flamingo Network of Excellence. Thank you again and uh, see you soon.